Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, we've heard a lot today about pressures in the system, uh, the impact on people access accessing health and care services, and what we're doing to support improvements now for winter and for the future. As the Health Secretary said, none of this is easy, uh, especially in times of financial austerity. But we are confident we are providing as much support as we can within our control. We have higher staffing per head in Scotland uh, compared to NHS England. We have already delivered a record number of GPs working in Scotland with more per head than any other country in the UK. And frontline health spending is 4.6% or £143 higher per head of population in Scotland than in the UK as a whole. This level of commitment will help us to minimise impact on people during this difficult time. And like Gillian Martin, uh, like Claire Adamson, Gillian Mackay and Christine Graham, I think it is crucial that we frame today's debate in terms of the cost of living crisis and the effects it will be having on the health of people across Scotland, both mental and physical health. We know that poverty is the single biggest driver of poor mental health, and this crisis will not be affecting people equally, just as during the pandemic, existing inequalities are being exacerbated. And, presiding officer, there is no aspect of this crisis without implications for mental health. And this is likely to be at all levels of need, from rising levels of worry and anxiety to increased levels of distress, to increasing demand for signposting and community support, to a likely rise in demand for specialist mental health services. And we are working across government and with key partners to look at what we can do within the limited powers of this parliament to support people throughout this crisis. Probably the only folk that won't be accessing these services are the likes of the bankers whose bonus cap has been removed, the ultra-rich whose taxes have been cut. That is the Tory way. Okay, Brian Whittle. Brian Whittle. Very grateful to the Minister to take an intervention, and I think I would like to, you know, try try again and talk about the inverse care law and the fact that again, GP Deep End last night told me that there's about 20% of people further removed from society who don't access the NHS services, and they're the ones that are in the most need. What are we going to do to stop stop that problem of of demand outstripping need? Minister, uh, presiding officer, uh, by investing in more outreach. But it's something that we cannot do if our budgets constantly get cut because Tories cut taxes rather than investing in our public services. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Gohani, Dr. Gohani's motion uh, mentioned CAM's waiting times. As Mental Wellbeing Minister, I want to use some of my time today to focus on that as just one area where this government is taking forward significant improvement work. I wholeheartedly agree that it's crucial that the right mental health help is available in the right place and at the right time. I want to um, uh, focus on what we need to do. I know that waits uh, for mental health services are unacceptable. Uh, and we are working to ensure that we meet the standard that 90% of people start treatment within 18 weeks. Um, that's why this government has invested in CAMS heavily over the past uh, year and past months. And we're now beginning to see the impact of our investments. They don't like this, President Officer, I know. Um, our investments in CAMS um, have shown that in the latest national performance data that over 5,200 children and young people began treatment last quarter. That is a record and it is the highest sustained level of activity. And boards are working hard. Those in the front line are working hard to reduce backlogs and to treat people, with those who have waited longest being treated first. Uh, no, I've had enough of Tories today, thank you very much. 
Uh, the Minister uh, must conclude. And we can see signs of progress. Uh, there has been an 8.6% decrease in waiting times over the last 18 weeks. Let's look at um, point CAM of staffing. Order, point of order, Stephen Kerr. Officer, does what we have just heard from the Minister comply with the standards of respect that is expected from members in this Absolutely. chamber? I'm sure that all members are aware of my insistence that we adhere to the Code of Conduct when debating issues Absolutely. in the Chamber, and I would remind members at all times to treat one another with courtesy yeah. and respect. Yeah, Minister, yeah. I must yeah, ask yeah. you to conclude your remarks. Presiding officer, uh, maybe some of the personal remarks that were aimed at the Cabinet Secretary earlier fall into that well, regard as well. Because um, that is uh, very personal indeed. Presiding officer, we will do all that we can to protect our people and our NHS from brutal Tory policies and their tanking of the economy. Yeah.